consciousness. It's our awareness, our understanding, our ignorance. Our daily consciousness leaves out more than it takes in. And due to this, it leaves out important things. Things that would help relieve us if we knew them. If we had a higher awareness, a better consciousness, we would feel better. We would be more at peace with things. The deep down truth of things is screened by our consciousness. Our sensory organs will pick things out. Our eyes can only see certain things. Our ears can only hear certain things. We have to create instruments and other tools to see things we as humans cannot, to expand our understanding and thus our ego, or consciousness. Humans evolved and became the dominant species on Earth by a long shot. It's due to our innate ability to network with each other. If humanity was wiped out and restarted, like loading an old save file, communities would still form. Structures within society are inevitable due to the variety of brains. Some are good at critical thinking, others are more artistic. However, we are all wired with some innate features. Just as humans form societies that evolve, other creatures do as well. But we're different. We are customizable characters, basically. We can kind of mold ourselves into whatever kind of person we want to be. We can't know for certain that animals or any other life on Earth is conscious or can even function in the same way that we do. Let's put it this way. I know that I have my own thoughts and feelings and emotions, but how can I know for certain that you or anyone else does? There's no way I can go to your head and see things 100% from your perspective. I can't know what you're thinking, or if you can even think in the first place. To truly understand the universe, to understand and actually experience life, you have to give yourself up. There's no point in sustaining bliss, and being permanently at an all-time high. The life you're living is what you have put yourself into, what ego you've formed, only you don't want to admit it, you want to believe it happened to you. Day to day, you play non-bliss in order to be able to experience bliss. You put yourself into bad situations, you let in the negative experiences in life just to feel some kind of satisfaction when it goes the other way. Self implies other, white implies black, death implies life. You can feel your existence as fundamental, not as an accident. At the basic level, at the lowest level imaginable, you are the fundamentals of existence. The same thing that makes you is the same thing that makes up everything else. If you can step back from what you believe, if you can step back from what your sensory organs have turned you into, you start to see things for what they actually are. Do you define yourself as a victim of the world, or as the world? Love is only possible due to the lack of self. You give up all your secrets, the walls you've built to keep people at an arm's distance slowly lower, one by one, until you're a completely open book, until all your pages have been read, and the rest of the pages are blank waiting to be filled with this newfound love. In basketball, or soccer, or football, you're constantly giving the ball to someone else. The point of the game is to have the ball in your hand for the least amount of time. To constantly be passing it to someone else, to shoot it, to get it out of your hands. It keeps the game going, and life is the same way. If you define yourself, you, as only being what your ego is, as the things you do voluntarily, then you're the victim. It's because of some higher power that you were put here when you didn't ask for it. But what about the things you do involuntarily? Do you beat your heart, or does it just happen to you? You do those things, even though you don't know how. Words don't work here. As Alan Watts said, everyone is fundamentally the alternate reality. Not God in a traditional sense, but God in the sense of being the self, the deep down basic whatever there is. And you're all that. Only you're pretending you're not. A mind that can ask, who am I? Why am I here? What is the purpose of all of this? Tends to forget. As I said, your consciousness tends to leave out critical information at times. A consciousness that can view the world and take in sensory information tends to forget what's behind those eyes. A mind that hasn't gone deep enough to find where those questions come from. Because the same place those questions come from is the same place those answers lie. The brain controls everything. In order to go to the extremes of the universe, to places we can only dream of going, we must first dive deep into something that is all inside of us. Take the Big Bang, for example. Now there's hundreds, thousands of theories as to how we came into existence, but let's go with this one. You believe that you are strictly you. Your human body is all that you are and all that you have ever been. You're simply a small speck of dust in a vast sea of galaxies, stars, planets. You're irrelevant. But rolling back the clock, things get smaller. 
The universe was more compact. The atoms that make you up are building blocks of the universe, of the hot gas clouds that form stars, that allowed solar systems to form, that allowed planets like Earth to form. If you keep rolling back this clock, you were around at the very instant everything came into existence. That is you too. When everything was infinitesimally small, you were there. But we define ourselves as being only us, mere humans walking on a planet that we didn't ask to get put on. But frankly, every one of us somehow made this happen. We just go on and pretend we didn't. It's because of how we define ourselves. Are you the victim, or are you the world? As cringy as it may sound, everyone you meet is just a small packet of the universe. A present, whether they're a pleasant one or not, that was packaged together from billions of years of engineering and architecture on a universal scale. But instead, we define ourselves as something completely separate from it, something not connected whatsoever, which is a foolish view. We tend to search for how the universe came into being, but we're just the universe trying to understand itself. In order to get to that conclusion, we have to reframe our mindset. We're not as different as we all think. Your name is given to you at birth. Your ideas and personality are collected from the world. Scraps, bits and pieces here and there cling to you like a magnet. So what part of you is you? We are all different manifestations of consciousness, but we are all fundamentally the same thing. We all may have different egos, different personalities, but when you step back, drop the ego, we are all connected. View the universe as a forest. Every one of us is a twig, a leaf, a branch. But together, we form life. Our origin, our roots, are connected together. Just as the roots of trees form a vast network which brings these massive forests to life, humanity's roots all come from the same place. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred from one form of energy to another. But many of us have this fear that it's all going to come to an end. And while yes, your life will end, your energy will not. It will continue onward, forever. But our consciousness has convinced us otherwise. We form this thought process, almost like we've been hypnotized, to think that we are all there is and all there ever will be, and that it's all going to come to an end. This leaves us unsatisfied and unhappy. But the universe is continuous, and you are technically the universe, so you will continue on as well. Your death is not the end of you, it's the death of your ego. Many people experience the same exact thing while living. Ego death. It tends to be induced through psychedelic drugs, LSD, shrooms, the list goes on. While working on this video, I actually experienced it myself, and although not intentional, it provided clarity in a way I've never before experienced. It's not the ego in the vernacular sense, as describing a person's self-worth. It's the philosophical ego. It's the complete loss of subjective self-identity. Everything that you believe you are will disappear. You're void of emotion, of connection to anything around you, of connection to what makes you, you. The idea of being a person doesn't make any sense. The words I, me, and myself have zero meaning whatsoever. The world can normally be put into two categories, myself and not myself. While experiencing ego death, this line is blurred. I am completely gone. There is only the awareness of existence. The lifetime accumulation of your thoughts and emotions are put on pause. It's as if you're on a cliff approaching an infinite void beneath you. Your life is continuous and exists all the way up the mountain until you reach the edge. Beneath you, though, is the unknown. Ego death is jumping into that void, leaving behind everything you've ever known. It's as if you've stepped out of your body into a separate entity. You start to see things for what they actually are. But things don't actually exist. Things is just a noun, it's a fragment of speech. And speech is just another instrument we've created to try and understand the world around us. Our senses allow us to go about our daily lives and traverse the world, but they don't really offer any explanations, so we have to make them up ourselves. While experiencing ego death, you disconnect from all of that. You have a heightened awareness, it's truly as if you're experiencing a higher level of consciousness that no person can understand. You reach this level that words can't explain. The instruments we made to try and understand our place in the universe shatter completely. Explaining it in terms of I saw or I felt don't seem reasonable. Our languages are instruments created to explain things that someone experiences. But while undergoing ego death, there is no someone. There is no me. So how do you describe it? 
It's as if your slate was wiped clean, your character's save file was corrupted, but you're still in the game. Because of this, ego death can be scary, but it can also be a very enlightening experience. It's both constricting and freeing. It's white and black. It's like you're defining what life is like through experiencing death. We cannot be more sensitive and welcoming to pleasure without being more sensitive and accepting to pain. You're flying and sinking at the same time, being pulled from below, in above, in every direction, at once. While going through it, I ended up reaching a moment of acceptance. Ego death, while often extremely anxiety inducing, offers a glimpse into a reality free of that. A life free of your personal flaws, your daily thoughts, your responsibilities. It personally feels as if time is frozen, and wherever your mind wanders is free to judge things as they truly are. You are the observer and the observable. Surprisingly, the conclusion I came to is the same conclusion I came to while making a previous video of mine, and it's that nothing in life really matters. Fear in general tends to come from us not being able to make peace with the chaos that is the universe, not being able to cope with the idea of entropy, that everything is tending towards disorder. Forming an ego is disorderly in the same way. You go further and further down your own tunnel, and stray further from everyone else. Experiencing ego death is breaking out of that tunnel, pulling back, and understanding that the network of these tunnels that encompass every human on Earth all eventually return back to the same place. When I die, when my ego is completely gone forever, when my physical body breaks down and no longer resembles the form it's in today, I'll still somehow be here. Right now, I'm an hourglass. The sand is slowly leaking its way to the bottom, and eventually it'll all be there. It's the end of the line for me. But when that day comes, the universe will stop by, take the hourglass, flip it over, and whatever made me, me will then become something entirely different. We're all just a temporary collection of atoms, and whatever you and I subjectively believe we are won't last forever. But objectively, we will. For now, just enjoy the ride. Your ego forms who you are, and it's much easier to alter if you're aware of it. Your friends, your thoughts, your hobbies, they're all your puzzle pieces. It doesn't have to be as deep as you think. You can change who you are, how you are, with minimal effort. If you're a naturally curious person, want to build your problem-solving skills, or just need to develop confidence in your analytical abilities, then I highly suggest you check out Brilliant. Brilliant's math, science, and computer science content helps guide you to mastery by taking complex concepts and breaking them up into bite-sized, understandable chunks. Information is everywhere, you're constantly taking it in, and Brilliant is the perfect place to gather knowledge. Whether you're learning a brand new subject or just brushing up on old knowledge, they exist to provide you with the best information there is out there on any topic they cover. They will train you to become a math, science, and computer science expert. So head to brilliant.org slash aperture for a free trial. The first 200 of you to check it out will get 20% off of a premium subscription and will allow you to take every single course that Brilliant has to offer. You'll be supporting my channel and your future at the same time.